Hi guys! So in this video I'm going to show how I made the Orc Battle Wagon by only using Warhammer 40k sprues. So to start with I took loads of sprues and then I took this single picture as a reference of the kind of vehicle I wanted to make and then after about 20 hours of cutting off thousands and thousands of nibbly knobbly bits this is what I ended up with. I have to say I'm pretty chuffed with myself. I think it's come out really well. So every part of this vehicle, from the wheels to the cannon, even down to the little rivets, it's all 100% made from Warhammer 40k sprues. So let's get started and show you guys how I made this. So I had to look online at some battle wagons, looking through loads and loads of different images of different types, and this is the one I ended up with, as I just preferred the look of it, because it was short and chunky, just like me. So to start with, I wanted to make some sort of framework for the vehicle. So I thought I'd have a go at penciling out an idea first, just to get the dimensions and the size kind of correct. And using my little org figure made it easy to get the scaling right. But I didn't want this thing to be too big, or for it to be too small. So before I get going, I just want to thank the following people for sending their sprues in to me, as without these sprues I wouldn't have been able to make this vehicle. So thanks again. So a big thank you to Stelio for sending this box of sprues in to me. There are some non-GW sprues here so I'll save those for something else that I'll be making. And a big thank you to the Pirate Painter for sending this huge box of sprues in. There's a link in the description guys if you want to go and check out the Pirate Painter. I would say these will keep me going for ages and ages but after this build I've got very little left. So guys here's a cheeky request. If you do have any sprues lying around that you're not going to use and they're just gathering dust in some old closet then I would certainly love to have them off you so I can make more things with sprues and do more top 10 videos of what can be made with sprues. I now have a PO box where everything can be sent to and again that'll be in the description guys. So to make the framework I started by getting lots of the sprues and basically cutting off the outer edges. And then once I had lots of long lengths it was down to the tricky business of cutting off the nibbly knobbly bits. Now normally guys I enjoy cutting off nibbly knobbly bits but I have to admit I think this video I probably spent at least two three hours maybe more of solely cutting nibbly knobbly bits off and by the end of it I was well nobbled out. But I think you have to agree it was definitely worth doing. So no bits get wasted as I keep all these nibbly knobbly bits in a little box and then basically these are the ones that I use to melt in acetone later on. So back to my little template here, I've reduced it down in size as after looking at it, it looked a little bit too wide compared to the picture. This is another great reason for me doing this, instead of starting to build the framework and then realising it was too late, that it was too big. And then it's just a case of cutting down all the lengths to the correct size. So then I've transferred all the cut bits onto my desk. As it's lined this will help me make sure that I get the angles 90 degrees and nothing's going to go askew. And then it's simply a case of just gluing all these bits together. So there's one layer of the framework done. And now to make the framework three dimensional, I'll add some more struts going upwards, and then basically another layer on the top. And there we go, that's the basic framework for this vehicle. Now I can cut the sprues down to the right length, just to fill in all the gaps around all the framework. So I'm going to build another little framework at the bottom of the vehicle, just to raise it off the ground, to leave some clearance room for when I do eventually get round to making the wheels and the tank treads. And there we go, it kind of looks like a weird version of Noah's Ark. So as you can see I've started filling in the framework with the sprues but obviously this task is going to take me a while so what I need to do is have a little break from that and start melting some sprues that I can use to make the wheels and other bits later. So to melt the sprues basically I'm just using this acetone 
which is normally used to remove paint from nails. That's fingernails and not hammering nails. So all the nibbly knobbly bits and short end bits of sprues that I've cut off just get placed in this and then the acetone will melt it down. So in just a couple of hours the sprues are already starting to melt down and basically it's made room for me to put more sprues in. The framework's now nearly completely covered in the sprues, so now I can move on to making some wheels. So I'm just using these normal wheels off a kid's toy, and as you can see I've already got them in a little framework of Lego bricks, as this is what I'm going to use to make the mould. So I'm using a two part silicon mould for this, I will leave links in the description guys so where you can get the stuff that I use, but basically it is mostly from Amazon. But if you click on one of my links it helps me out as I am now an affiliate with Amazon. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but basically every time you buy something I get a couple of pence from it. So I have got some scales that I'm going to use to help measure this out, as this is mixed on a ratio of 20 to 1. So using scales is really important for this part. So once the two parts are in together they need a good stirring, and you get one consistent colour and then you know it's thoroughly mixed. To help reduce getting bubbles trapped in the mixture, you're best off pouring from a nice height and getting a thin stream. So I like to have a border of at least 5mm around the piece that I'm making, that's around the sides and on the top. So 12 hours later the silicone's fully cured and I can take it out of its little framework. Using the Lego to make the framework is really cool as you can make it whatever size you need and it's easy to come off afterwards. And there we go, we've got a mould ready to make some tyres. So the sprues have been in this acetone for a good 24 hours now, so it's well and truly melted and it's nice and gooey. And then it's just a case of pulling out the melted sprues. And kind of pouring it into the mould. So when the acetone has evaporated from the sprues, and the sprues return to being firm again, they do reduce down in size, which is why I'm going to put more gooey sprue stuff in the mould than I need really, just so when it shrinks down it should be approximately the right size. So I've left it a good 24 hours before taking the tyres out, but even now it's still a little bit soft and really it takes a good 2-3 days for the acetone to evaporate off for this to go back to being solid plastic. But as I need to make more tyres, I'm taking these out now just so I can get another set put in. And then basically I'll just leave these to one side to fully cure, or harden, or basically just return back to being the sprues firmness that they were before. So while the tyres haven't come out perfect, they're certainly good enough for an orc vehicle. So back to the main part of the build, it's now fully covered in sprues, but what I want to do now is try and smooth it all down a little bit. So basically I'm just going to use my Dremel bit, sand it all down and take the edges off the corners making them a bit rounded and basically just trying to make it look more like it's a sheet panel rather than lots of little sticks. So it's still kind of rough looking, but it's a lot better than it was, and I'm sure once it's got paint on, the sprues will look a lot less noticeable, plus any holes and gaps left in will just look like it's a bit damaged, and I'll add some good old rust effects to it. So as well as those larger wheels, I'm also going to make some smaller wheels to use for the tank tread, and I've done that in the same way I've done with the bigger ones. I've made a mould, and now I can make several pairs of smaller wheels.
So one of the things I like most about using these sprues is some of them have these weird and irregular shapes inside. And it just so happens that this one has a nice little circle inside, which will work well for this build. So I can just cut them out and then trim off the nibbly knobbly bits. And these are going to be glued on the top. One of them is going to have the cannon on it and the other one's going to have the captain sitting out of it. So for the tank treads, again I've made a little template just so I can get it to roughly the right size and because I need to make two of them this will help doing that a lot easier. So to make the tank treads I'm making them in little sections and each section is going to have two of these little sprues cut up and glued together and then there's going to be one placed on the top so it's kind of like a little triangle or a little pyramid. So that's one made, I just need to make loads more and then glue them together. And in good old Blue Peter style fashion, here's some I made earlier. So it's just a case of lining them up and then gluing them together. And then I've attached the larger wheels that I'm going to be using. And then for the smaller wheels, I've glued them onto a sprue just to make it easier and to help keep things all together. And then it's just a case of gluing the sprues together, going up at the right angle, and then they're going to go up and over these little wheels that are at the top. Okay guys, so that's the end of part one. I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen so far. To carry on seeing the build of this Ultimate Orc Battle Wagon, don't forget to click here on part number two to see how the rest of it's built, and I ended up with this. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and leave some comments guys as that helps YouTube's algorithms promote this video to other people. If you are new here, hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to be informed of all the new videos that I produce. Okay guys, bye for now, I'll see you in part two.